Hey, how's it going? This is Melinda and welcome to my channel. Today, I am showing you an incredibly rare grail record. One I never see and I'm guessing you never see either. It's a cool record to find. It's a cool record to have and I'm so excited about it. I'm also going to be showing other records as well. Some records that I received probably about a month ago, so I'm a little delayed in giving my thank you. They are great records, and I'm excited to show those too. So if you're not a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, hit the like button, the notification bell, you know what to do. It really helps my channel, and I'm getting very, very close to a number of subscribers I never dreamed I would ever have. You know, when I first started making videos, I just, the goal was maybe someday I'll get a thousand subscribers because when I started, that was kind of the goal. That was kind of, if you saw someone else who made vinyl videos and they had over a thousand subscribers, you thought, woo, that is so cool. But I'm getting close to 20,000 subscribers. Uh, I don't really get too into the numbers like that. But, you know, when you hit a big number like that, I, I can't help but be excited and honored by that. Um, so please subscribe. Help me get over that mark. And let's go ahead and get started with showing these records. My husband and I went to St. Augustine, Florida for a little bit of a vacation time. Uh, it was supposed to be a pretty long vacation. It got cut short because of the hurricane but it was a beautiful time. We had perfect weather the whole time we were there. So no regrets at all, had a great time. But before we went on this trip, I received four records and they were all from the Sun Dazed label. But I hadn't heard anything from the Sun Dazed label. They didn't let me know they were sending any records my way. So I'm assuming they didn't. I'm assuming someone who watches my channel ordered these records and then sent them my way. That's what I think happened, but they did not leave their name or a message. They didn't let me know they were sending them. They were a complete surprise. I opened it and I'm like, how did I get these records? Did I accidentally order these? Sometimes I have insomnia at night and I had order records and then uh, they come in and I'm like, oh my gosh, what have I done? Uh, that was not the case with this. I didn't order these but they are phenomenal. So whoever sent these records my way, know my channel, know my musical tastes very, very well, because these are great records. So they're on the Sundays label. I highly recommend you check out Sundays. Uh, they are a great label. I don't think they get enough credit for what all they put out there. Uh, let's start off with this incredible record by a band called Gypsy. They came out probably, I think this one was about 1971. It's a killer record. The guitar playing is amazing on here. And I love when you hear a certain album, you automatically know around the time it came out. You know, uh, a lot of people criticize the 80s for the over the top production. But you know what, when you put on an 80s record, you know it. And I think that's, there's something cool about that. Same thing with these late 60s, early 70s records. There's just something different about the guitar sound and they play the organs and there's just uh, an organ. It's just really, really cool. And uh, here is a really beautiful album cover. I love the gatefold. It's got a little bit of a matte finish. It really reminds me of Neil Young's Harvest album, how it feels and how it looks. Killer, killer album. And it is on the Sunday's label. They put it on colored vinyl. It's kind of on a really pretty color here for fall. It looks really good. And as you can see, it looks like that rainbow capital label, but they actually put Sundays on it. This record sounds very cool. And the band Gypsy didn't become a huge uh, commercial success, but this record is killer. It's so good so in my wheelhouse. I think the best, biggest hit they had maybe came out, uh, it was uh, number 62 in the charts. Uh, it was called Gypsy Queen. It's, it's really great. So 
I love this record. The band Gypsy, from what I understand, uh, was the house band for the Whiskey A Go Go from 1969 to 1971. You know, they never made it to the stratosphere, so we don't all know the band The Gypsy, or Gypsy, but they were really great. So I really enjoy having that one in the collection. It was two LPs on colored vinyl, sounded really, really good. Here's another one that I have never heard. It's a compilation album. It's called Gritty 60s Garage and Punk Special Assortment Multipurpose. Look at this guy on here, so funny. Uh, it's Beat Rocket Space Rated Sounds. A really great record. I don't know, I, I want you to see the track listing on here. Um, I would say if you're curious about it, there's a song in here by Living Children called Crystallize Your Mind. I love the guitar riff on that one. That one's just really good. And these are basically garage rock bands, obscure music. Some songs sound better than others. It just depended on how they were recorded. A lot of times this garage rock sounds like kind of grungy, uh, maybe not as clear, and then others sound really, really great. And again, it's on the Sunday's label. It's on this beautiful uh, yellow translucent vinyl. And I really love it. I love this kind of music. I love the guitar playing. I love the, the sound. So uh, this was another really good one that was sent my way along with these two records. Oh, let me read this to you too. This was the hype sticker that was on this really cool compilation. Uh, it says, Early punk, garage rock, and psych monsters. Rare and or originally unissued artifacts from the unstoppable 60s infestation of teenagers with guitars and drums that took over their parents' garages. So that kind of explains how you get garage rock. Uh, that's how that genre got its name. Here is another one. This one is a band I'd never heard of in my life. And yet, wow, they are fantastic. This is called Royal Air Coach, Open Up Your Mind. They later dropped Royal and became just Air Coach. I don't think they ever made it into major, major fame. But the guitar playing, again, I think this one is around the 1968 era killer guitar sounds and uh they said the band said that at the time when they heard the song hey jude by the beatles it was like an eye-opening moment where they realized you know we don't have to have just these three minute songs we can push the envelope a little bit so a couple of these songs on this album are over seven minutes long most of them are in that three minute kind of you know give or take Great stuff. Wrapped up in your mind. Wondering why is very cool. I really enjoyed this. This was so good. Band I never heard of before. And uh, I'll show you. It is on a really pretty blue colored vinyl. Love the label. Sundazed once again. Loud and proud. So those were really great records. And then the fourth and final record that was in this box Again, it let me know that whoever sent this record my way, they knew who I was and what I like. And they sent One Year by Colin Bloomstone. Colin Bloomstone is one of my favorite vocalists. He has the voice of an angel. And on this record, it is killer. This is a record I was wanting to order and didn't. Um, he... He, by the way, is the lead singer for the band The Zombies. Uh, the Zombies Odyssey and Oracle is my favorite album of all time. And his voice is just magical to me. It hits me in all the right places. I love Calm Bloomstone. This record is one I wanted to order and I hadn't gotten around to it because I knew that the Bill Evans box set was coming and I knew I had to cut back. Um, and thankfully this came my way and I didn't have to buy it unbelievable. I love everything on this record, but what's best is when it is stripped down and just uh, his vocals 
with just very minimal music in the background. It just really shows off Colin Bloomstone's talents. It is such a great record, you guys. I highly recommend this one. Give it a listen. Give the Royal Air Coach a listen and give this a listen. These are so fantastic. So uh, let me show you the record too. It's uh, just a really cool reproduction of that Epic label. I love seeing this Epic label on those early records. So uh, two LPs, fantastic. So to whoever sent these records, I would really appreciate if you'd let me know who you are. If somehow I missed a message from Sundays that you were sending this my way, let me know so I can correct the record. But um, I have a feeling this was sent to me from someone um, anonymously. For some reason, you want to remain anonymous, and I appreciate it. Uh, this music is fantastic. These are records I didn't even know about, um, besides the Calm Bloomstone, of course. The mu music's killer on all of them. And I'm, I'm so excited. When I played them, I was just like, oh, I can't believe it. I can't believe there's records and music that sounds so good and that I enjoy so much. And they've been around for over 50 years, and yet I have never heard them before. That is the magic of being a vinyl collector and being a music lover in general. So thank you. Thank you so much for the generous gift of this beautiful music. And now I want to move on because there is a really killer grail that I never expected to find out in the wild. And yet I did. And it's a magical moment. So I want to just let you know, I found it in St. Augustine, Florida. I've been vacationing. My husband and I have been vacationing there for a very long time. I've bought a lot of records from this one particular record store. They never disappoint. I never leave empty handed. They have a great jazz selection. I have found really cool records in the past. When, oh, when I was very early on in collecting either, you know, even, I can remember finding the best of Blondie there, a second pressing of Kiss's debut album. I have found some great stuff there. So I'm talking about the store called Tone Vendor. They're in St. Augustine in the historical part really close to where the fort is. And I go there every time I go to St. Augustine. So first off, let me show you a record that I found there that um, if I hadn't found this other record, this one would have been just the, wow, I can't believe I found this record. Uh, let's, let's see it here. It's Miles Davis, Early Minor. This was a Record Store Day record that came out in either 2018 or 2019. I don't remember, I think 2018. And it is basically some of the uh, tracks from In a Silent Way, my favorite jazz album of all time by Miles Davis. It's so killer. So after I fell in love with In a Silent Way, I regretted that I didn't go on and pick up this. This is like demos. Uh, let's read what it says here. Rare gems from the um, dawn of electric Miles Davis. So... I couldn't believe someone had let this one go and I was able to buy it for a very, very good price. Uh, just so excited about it. You know, they did a really good reproduction of the 2i Columbia, just like the originals of In a Silent Way. So love having that one finally in the collection. And I did not pay more than I would have paid the day it came out for sale on Record Store Day. So I am so thrilled with that. So now this is one of those magical moments. I went in to Tone Vendor and I always, when I go to a store, immediately look at the holy moly walls. That's kind of where I start. That's just the beginning for me to see if there's anything just extremely special up there. And I walked into Tone Vendor and immediately had that Whoa! Moment. Because I found a record that I never thought I would find. It is super rare. How do I know it's super rare? Here is how I think it is super rare. When I went and looked at this record in Discogs, way more people want this record than own it. 
and I'm saying like there's 24 people or 20 some people who own it and over 200 that want it in their collection. And also there are none for sale currently. This is a record that if it does become available is usually in such poor condition. The album cover is usually trashed. We're talking G, you know, for good or fair. Very rarely does it come in the condition that this one is in. So I've been talking and teasing for long enough. Let's see what this record is. Drum roll, please. It is Chet Baker Sings. And it came out in 1954 on an EP with uh, very limited songs on it. Came out again in 1956 on the Pacific Jazz label. This is the 1957 pressing on World Pacific. And let me tell you, look at the album cover for one. There are no seam splits. There is no damage. It is gorgeous. Looks great. There is some yellowing from age and a little check mark up here. So maybe the original owner was like, yay, I'll give it a check mark because I really like this record. I don't know, but it is a killer record. And I love the album cover and I love the music. Give it a few listens. I promise you, it will grow on you and you will learn to love it. Now, let me show you the inner sleeve because yes, it came with the inner sleeve and it is in really great condition, yellowed with years, of course, but no seam splits, no marks, no problems. It looks fantastic. Uh, you can even see uh, World Pacific Records bonus coupon. I don't really know what that means, but uh, look at that and you can see all of the other records they were trying to get you to buy at that time. It even says any hi-fi album on this page free. Uh, ever, now every fourth World Pacific High Fidelity long playing album costs you nothing and I'd have to read. I don't really know what the details of that was, but uh, I promise you this was not free. I did pay a lot of money for it, but to me it was worth it to get it in the condition it's in because it's stunning. Let me show you the record itself. Here it is. It's on the World Pacific Records label. It says High Fidelity, uh, Micro Groove. I mean, look at the shine on this. I was truly stunned. Uh, I really love it. It's beautiful. And it's in such fabulous condition. You guys, it plays so good. There's only one song on here where you hear some audible clicks and pops. Um, and I wouldn't even say they're distracting. They just, you do hear them. It's a song called My Ideal. It's the one that kind of sounds like if you uh, are familiar with Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, you know, when the trolley was out playing, there's a little bit of that sound to this song. It makes me wonder, was Fred Rogers inspired by this Chet Baker Sings album to make the trolley? have that kind of sound? Was it just a coincidence? I don't know. But when I hear the song, My Ideal, I automatically think of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood in that trolley. Um, I, that's just my age. That's, that's the age I grew up in. But wow, I am so excited to now have this wonderful record. It is amazing. It's very early on. And I will say this now. Uh, Mike from the In Groove said that if it's a record he never sees and doesn't own, it's a rare record. He sold on his Whatnot auction. He sold the Tone Poet that came out in 2020 for over $200, which was more than I paid for this particular version of it. Um, it's just a really stunning find for me, and I'm going to treasure it. I love it. Let me know what you think. If you have any information about this particular pressing, I'd be really interested because I have a hard time finding any information about it. I don't see a lot of these records going up for sale very often. You can't buy this particular pressing right now on Discogs. There are none for sale. Like I said, to my knowledge, this is a super rare record to find in good condition. So leave your comments below. Again, please subscribe to my channel. 
Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.